Hi, I'm Rob Ocell. I'm a senior software developer at This.Labs. I'm Tracy Lee. I'm a Google developer expert and creator of This.Media. And I'm Ben Morse. I'm a developer advocate at Google. Welcome to our advanced course on Accelerated Mobile Pages, or AMP. These videos will allow you to take the course from anywhere. You'll find additional material in the course text on the AMP website, but these videos are a complete version of the course. Whenever you need to access a web page, we'll refer you to the video description, which will contain all the URLs you need. All right, let's begin. Let's get started. Um, Ben, I think three's a crowd. All right, I'll just go take a nap or something. In the beginner course, we learned how to create a basic AMP site using components. In the intermediate course, we learned how to use AMP to handle user interactions such as clicks and key presses with event handlers and actions. We also learned how to collect information from our users using the AMP form. We also learned how to build more elaborate features by combining multiple components. So far, we've built a site from scratch for the fictional Chico's Cheese Bikes shop. First, we converted an existing HTML page into a basic AMP page. Then, we added content to our Cheese Bike site, such as videos and images, a slide-out navigation menu with submenus, a form where users can sign up to receive our newsletter by email, and a carousel of images that users can scroll through and an accompanying carousel of thumbnail images. Finally, an image light box where users can click on images to expand and zoom them in. So, what else is there left to learn? In the site we've built so far, all users see the same content. But when different users see different content for the same page, we call that a dynamic site. The content of a dynamic site changes depending on factors like which user is browsing the site, the time the site is visited, and what the user has done so far on the page. Dynamic sites are common throughout the internet today. For example, we might visit the same URL to read our emails, but the emails we see are different. We see personalized product lists on shopping websites depending on our past interests. Social media content is targeted based on our interests, and feedback on news stories shows up as readers' comments. In each case, the designers of those sites had to develop a page without knowing exactly what would be shown on screen. Now, we'll learn how to change the appearance and content of a page depending on how users interact with it. By the end of this course, you're going to be able to store information in application state variables in response to user interactions, change a website's content or appearance in response to that information, and use templates to retrieve and display server data on your page. You're also going to be able to retrieve information from a remote server and display some of its data as on-screen content. Here is what we're going to build in this course. First, we will continue to refine our existing carousel. We will use state variables and bindings instead of events and actions to keep the carousels in sync. Next, we'll add a slide counter that keeps track of which slide we are currently viewing. And finally, we'll add a list of products to our website, which are loaded from a server, filterable by category, and sortable by price. Next, we'll spend some time looking at other popular website genres you can build with AMP. After you begin building your own sites in AMP, you may work on a completely different kind of site. We'll examine video and e-commerce sites, and we'll use the concept we've learned in these courses to understand how popular sites are actually built. Next, we'll recreate basic versions of these sites in AMP. In this course, we'll be using data in the JSON format. JSON is a standard format for structured data based on the JavaScript object syntax. You'll need to use JSON to complete this course. This course continues from where the previous courses left off. By now, you should be comfortable with using the following AMP concepts. AMP page structure and boilerplate, validation and the AMP cache, AMP components and how to combine them, using AMP documentation, handling user input using events and actions, and if any of these topics are unfamiliar for some reason, you should review the previous courses before continuing with this one. If you have been following along with the previous exercises, you can continue using the same Glitch repository to complete this course. If necessary, you can also start with the new Glitch repository at the link in your video description. This Glitch repository includes all of the code from the previous courses. No matter which Glitch repository you use, it already contains the styles, image assets, and server endpoints that you will need to complete these exercises. At the end of this course, 
we'll provide a final Glitch repository that contains code from all of the course exercises.